Uh, good morning. This is Gary Adams with the National Cotton Council, and I would like to welcome everyone to the National Cotton Council's conference call and webinar regarding the recently passed seed cotton program. With the new program taking effect for this year's crop, we felt that it was important to disseminate the information as quickly as possible, and conducting a series of calls and webinars is the best way to do that. Uh, just remind everyone that the conference lines are in lecture mode uh, until we conclude the presentation and open things up for a Q&A. Uh, we'll also uh, let you know that you can download the presentation uh, as well as a summary document from the National Cotton Council's website. Uh, just as a, a few words by way of background, you'll recall that on February 9th, Congress passed a budget agreement that included supplemental disaster provisions for agriculture. In addition, the legislation included the seed cotton program as well as provisions to improve the safety net for dairy producers. <clears throat> the seed cotton program represents the culmination of more than two years of concerted effort by the U.S. cotton industry to improve the support program by authorizing cotton's eligibility for the PLC and ARC programs within the 2014 Farm Bill. I want to recognize the diligent efforts of the staff of the National Cotton Council as well as the numerous cotton industry associations that worked hard to achieve this outcome. Dedicated industry leadership was also critically important in these efforts, and to those I offer my thanks. Achieving this new policy would not have been possible without the tireless efforts of our friends in Congress, especially the work of Senator Thad Cochran, Chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, and Congressman Mike Conaway, Chairman of the House Agriculture Committee. The industry is also very grateful for uh, a number of our members across the Cotton Belt that voted in support of this important piece of legislation. Before we review the program, let me address the importance of establishing a seed cotton policy in advance of the new Farm Bill and why it was necessary to convert generic base beginning in 2018 rather than 2019. Cotton producers needed an improved safety net as soon as possible and the Supplemental Disaster Bill was the last legislative vehicle to accomplish that outcome in advance of the Farm Bill. The Supplemental Disaster Bill also provided an opportunity to add additional baseline funding through the changes for dairy and cotton. Adding new money would not have been possible in the Farm Bill process, and addressing cotton and dairy now will make the upcoming Farm Bill development a bit less difficult. Generic base acres are cotton based from the previous Farm Bill and were intended as a temporary measure to keep some support on those acres until a new cotton policy was implemented in Title I. The conversion of generic base in 2018, one year ahead of the new farm bill, helped ensure the budget resources currently associated with generic acres would remain within the new cotton program and with other crops that establish base acres by converting generic base to crop-specific bases. If development of the cotton policy and conversion of generic base occurred in the context of the upcoming Farm Bill debate, there would have been many more interest involved who would want a portion of the generic base acre payments to go to their priorities instead. Strengthening the cotton program and converting generic base acres so that all payment acres are now decoupled from plantings should make it easier to defend and maintain the support levels and payment limit provisions that are critically important important to agriculture across the cotton belt. With the approval of the provisions for cotton and dairy, the agriculture committees are in a much better position to move forward with development of the new farm bill. In the upcoming farm bill, cotton will be focused on maintaining the seed cotton policy. Our industry is also seeking some improvements to the operation of the marketing loan program, enhancements in cotton flow, and increasing support for the U.S. textile industry. We anticipate the House Agriculture Committee will try to pass their version of the new Farm Bill out of committee by the end of the first quarter. The Senate Agriculture Committee is, is likely to follow shortly after. The committee bills must then be approved by their respective bodies and then work out any differences in a conference. This needs to occur by September 30 when some provisions of the existing Farm Bill begin to expire. <laughs> so there's a tremendous amount of work still in front of uh, Congress as the new Farm Bill comes together. Given the numerous attacks on ag policy by outside interest groups from across the political spectrum, it's critical that all of U.S. agriculture work together to defend the Farm Bill. 
Let me thank you for your participation in the conference call webinar, and I also want to thank those that are hosting groups at your office. Uh, if you would do us a favor uh, to give us an idea of the number of people that we reach, I ask those with groups to give a rough idea of the number at your location by typing the number of attendees into the webinar's chat window. We will take questions at the end of the presentation uh, with the webinar chat window be, uh, questions answered first, and then we'll open the conference lines. If you have any follow-up questions or need additional information after the webinar, you are always welcome to contact your NCC member services representative or contact myself or any of the staff, either in the Memphis or the Washington office. I'll now introduce Dr. Jody Campici, the Council's Vice President of Economic and Policy Analysis for today's presentation. So Jody, I'll turn it over to you now. Okay, we will review the 2018 Seed Cotton Program information. And as a reminder, the information presented today is based on our review of the legislative language. Final details are subject to change based on USDA's interpretation of language and implementation. Seed cotton is designated as a covered commodity eligible for PLC and ARC programs in the 2014 Farm Bill, beginning with the 2018 crop. Seed cotton refers to ungenned upland cotton that includes both lint and cotton seed. The reference price is set at 36.7 cents per pound. The price floor is set at 25 cents per pound. The seed cotton marketing or average price is a weighted average of the upland cotton lint price and the cotton seed price. The lint and cotton seed prices are weighted based on annual shares of production, which means that the weights will be different each year. To calculate the price, we take the U.S. upland lint production times the U.S. marketing year average lint price plus U.S. cotton seed production times the U.S. cotton seed price, and then divide that by the total of U.S. cotton lint production and U.S. cotton seed production. The marketing year price is not final until the end of the marketing year. The marketing year runs from August 1st to July 31st. USDA then publishes uh, the marketing year average price, usually in late September, early October. Throughout the year, USDA does publish monthly estimates and we will be providing these estimates on our website and we'll update it each month so that you can see the marketing average prices for lint, cotton seed, and then the combined seed cotton marketing or average price. So as an example, let's assume the U.S. upland cotton lint marketing average price is 69 cents per pound. And this is actually the midpoint of the February 2018 WASI numbers. The U.S. cottonseed marketing average price is $150 a ton. To get U.S. upland cotton lint production, we take bales and convert that to pounds. For cottonseed production, it's reported in tons, and we also uh, convert that to pounds. We add the two together, and we have total lint and cottonseed production. Okay, so now just putting the numbers into the formula that we just saw, we uh, end up with the weights, a weight for lint and then a weight for cottonseed. And if you go down to the bottom line, you'll see that the weight for lint would be 0.4233 times the lint price plus 0.5767, that would be the weight for cottonseed, times the cottonseed price, and we get a seed cotton marketing or average price of 33.53 cents. And again, these weights will change each year, and we will update the weights and the prices throughout the marketing year. Okay, so over time, uh, this chart shows where the lint price is, the cotton seed price, and then the seed cotton price. And I also included a couple lines that show the reference price of 36.7 cents and then the price floor of 25 cents. So let's first take a look at 
prices that are shown on here. Of course, these are estimates at this point. So if you look at Lent prices, Lent prices increased a bit from 16 to 17. Cotton seed prices dropped from 16 to 17. So when you look at the seed cotton price for 17, you'll see that it also dropped. As it, it takes into calculation both Lent and uh, cotton seed prices. And you can see on the chart where uh, the, the seed cotton price would have fell in relation to the reference price of 36.7 cents. So in the last few years, uh, starting with 2014, you can see that the seed cotton marketing average price is below the reference price. Okay, so this spreadsheet is an example showing the calculation for the seed cotton marking your average price per pound. And using the examples that we just went through, using a lint marketing your average price of 69 cents and a cotton seed marketing average price of $150 a ton, you can see in the red bolded area, it says 33.5, so 33.53 cents, which is what we just calculated. And you can go across on this table to see what the seed cotton marketing or average price would be at uh, different levels of a lint price and a cotton seed price. So as an example, let's say that the lint price dropped to 61 cents. And let's say that the cotton seed price stayed at $150 a ton. So you go to where those two meet up and you would see 0 .301, so about 30 cents. And again, the same applies as you go across if you look at a higher lint price and a higher cotton seed marketing or average price, you'll see that the seed cotton marketing or average price increases. So again, you can look on here and kind of see how this compares to the reference price of 36.7 cents per pound. And this spreadsheet is available on our website if you want to go look at it a little more closely. Okay, so for the seed cotton payment yield, it is equal to the lint yield plus the cotton seed yield. It's also equal to 2.4 times the lint yield. And this is because the cotton seed yield is determined as 1.4 times the lint yield. The 1.4 conversion factor is consistent with the approach using crop insurance. The upland cotton lint payment yield is equal to the higher of the CCP lint yield or the updated lint yield. There will be a one-time opportunity to update the payment yield for upland cotton based on 90% of the average of 2008 to 2012 actual yields, not counting years in which cotton was not grown. And this is consistent with the yield update option for other covered commodities during the 2014 Farm Bill implementation. <coughs> Okay, as an example, let's assume that the cotton lint yield is 800 pounds per acre. The pounds of cotton seed would be 1.4 times 800. That would equal 1,120 pounds per acre. The seed cotton payment yield would be 800 plus 1,120, and that would equal 1,920 pounds per acre. This is also equal to 2.4 times 800. Seed cotton payment is made when the reference price exceeds the higher of the marketing or average price and the price floor. The seed cotton PLC payment rate is equal to the reference price minus the higher of the marketing or average price and the price floor. The seed cotton payment rate would be zero if the seed cotton marketing or average price is higher than the reference price of 36.7. The seed cotton PLC payment is paid on 85% of the farm's decoupled seed cotton base. So the payment would be the PLC payment rate times the payment yield times 85%, or 0.85. And this is consistent with the PLC program for other covered commodities in the 2014 Farm Bill. So looking at an example, we'll use the marketing average price that we calculated a few slides back of 33.53 cents. So the PLC payment rate would be the reference price, 36.7, minus the higher of 33.53 cents 
and 25 cents. Take that payment rate, we multiply it by 1,920 pounds per acre times 85% of base acres, and you get $51.73. Now, you take this $51 and you multiply that by total base acres. We went ahead and multiplied it by 85% so you could get the payment that would be spread across all of your base acres. Seed cotton base is established through the conversion of generic base acres. Generic base acres are not in effect beginning with the 2018 crop. For any farms with generic base and no covered commodities, including seed cotton, planted from 2009 to 2016, those generic base acres will become unassigned crop base and ineligible for ARC PLC. Now, just to go over this in a little bit more detail, if one acre of one covered commodity is planted in one single year between 2009 to 2016, you still remain eligible. This does not affect any other base other than generic base. So your existing base is not affected based on whether or not a covered plant, a commodity was planted during this time. And just to reiterate as well, all existing base that you currently have remains the same. There will be no changes to that base. This uh, base update will only apply to your generic base acres. So producers will have an opportunity to convert generic base acres to sea cotton and other covered commodity base acres using uh, one of the two options shown below. So option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average seed cotton plantings or 80% of generic base. And the total cannot exceed total generic base. Any unconverted generic base becomes unassigned crop base and ineligible for PLC or ARC. Option two, all generic base would be converted proportionally based on 2009 to 12 average plantings of seed cotton and other covered commodities. So option two is consistent with the base update during the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill and will allow a producer to gain additional base of other covered commodities other than just seed cotton if the producer chose to do so. Okay, so let's walk through a couple of examples. So let's say a farm had 500 acres of generic base. From 2009 to 2012, the average planted acres of cotton was 200. Corn was 300, soybeans was 300. So that gives us a total covered commodity, covered commodities planted of 800 acres. Okay, under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 200, or 80% times the 500 acres of generic base, which would be 400. So seed cotton base would be 400, unassigned base would be 100. Under option two, you could allocate 500 acres of generic base to cotton, corn, and soybeans based on the amount planted of each crop. So for cotton, 200 acres was planted, we divide, it, we divide that by the total 800 acres of covered commodities and then multiply that by the 500 acres of generic base. And we get 125 acres of seed cotton. We get 187 acres of corn, 187 acres of soybeans. So total allocated base acres would be 500. Of course, there would be no unassigned base. Okay, the next example, generic base of 500, 500 acres of cotton planted, 200 acres of wheat planted, 100 acres of sorghum. So total covered commodities for 2009 to 2012 is 800 acres. Under option one, seed cotton base equals the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 500, 80% times 500 generic base acres is 400. 
So seed cotton base would equal 500. Unassigned base would equal zero. Under option two, we would allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton, wheat, and sorghum. We'd end up with 312 acres of cotton, 125 acres of wheat, and 62 acres of sorghum. Okay, the next example. Total generic base is 500 acres. 2009 to 12 average planted acres of cotton was 600, corn was 200. So total covered commodities would be 800 acres. Under option one, seed cotton base would equal the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 600, 80% times 500 generic base acres is 400. However, since seed cotton base cannot be greater than generic base, the seed cotton base would be 500 because that is the max amount of seed cotton base you could have under option one. Unassigned base would be zero. Under option two, we would allocate the 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn. Okay, the next example, total generic base of 500, 2009 to 12 average planted acres, cotton 100 acres, corn 100 acres, and alfalfa and non-covered crop 600 acres. So total covered commodities would be 200 acres. Of course, we're only adding the cotton and the corn. Under option one, seed cotton base would equal the higher of 2009 to 12 average planted cotton acres of 200, 80% times 500 acres of generic base is 400. So seed cotton base would be 400 acres. Unassigned base would be 100. Or you could allocate 500 acres of generic base to cotton and corn. And we would take the ratio of each crop planted, so 100 divided by 200 for each of those crops, and multiply it by 500. And what I wanna point out is that even though only 200 acres of covered commodities were planted from nine to 12, you still allocate the full 500 acres of generic base. So you would have 250 acres of cotton, 250 acres of corn, and no unassigned base. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a spreadsheet that shows seed cotton payments per base acre. And this shows different combinations of lint prices and cotton seed prices. And at the top, you'll see the lint payment yield and it's bolded in red. And it, right now under this spreadsheet, it's 800. The 800 is multiplied by 2.4 to get the seed cotton payment yield of 1920. Now, if we look at the example we used earlier, we'll see a lint price of 69 cents, cotton seed price of $150 a ton, and you'll see in the bold red an, a payment of $52 per base acre. And we've already multiplied by 85% in this spreadsheet. Now, of course, the 85% is only applied to base acreage, so it's 85% of base acreage, but we applied it to the formula so you could go ahead and see the $52 payment that would then be spread across your total base acres. Now, this spreadsheet is available on our website. You can download it, and then you'll be able to go in and change that lint payment yield at the top, where you see 800, and then the whole spreadsheet will calculate for you. And just to show how payments changes uh, with different lint prices or cottonseed prices, let's say the lint price drops to $61, at $61, 61 cents per pound, and let's say the cotton seed marketing your average price is $150 a ton, and you will see a seed cotton PLC payment per base acre of $107. Now you can look over towards the bottom right of the spreadsheet, and you'll see zeros. When it when the payment is zero, 
of course, the reference price would be lower than the seed cotton marking your average price. So if you look where the lint marking your average price is 75 cents a pound and the cotton seed marketing your average price is $180 a ton, you'll see a payment of zero. Okay, next we'll look at an example using a lint payment yield of 1,000. So the 1,000 is multiplied by 2.4 to get a seed cotton payment yield of 2,400. Looking at the example of 69 cents per pound, $150 per ton, you'll see a payment per acre of $65. And again, I encourage you to go to the website and download this spreadsheet so you can look at the numbers uh, more closely and start to understand how the combinations work and how the seed cotton payment would change. Okay, in this example, the lint payment yield is 1,200. So we take the 1,200, multiply it by 2.4, and you get a seed cotton payment yield of 2880. Look at the same example from previously, the lint marketing your average price of 69 cents, the cotton seed marketing your average price of $150 a ton, you see a payment per acre of $78. Okay, for other details, for the 2018 crop, the Stax insurance product may be purchased for acres of upland cotton planted on a farm enrolled in the seed cotton PLC or ARC program. Now, of course, stacks must be purchased prior to the sales closing date. For later years, starting with the 2019 crop, stacks and PLC and ARC cannot be purchased or enrolled on the same farm. So a producer would have to choose between stacks or PLC and ARC. The non-recourse marketing assistance loan for upland cotton lint remains unchanged in the 2014 Farm Bill, with an upland cotton loan rate of 52 cents per pound for the 2018 crop. PLC and ART payments for seed cotton are subject to the payment limit of $125,000, which also applies to other covered commodities, other than peanuts. Now, the examples that we work through show PLC payments. PLC calculations. We will be providing ART County calculations and examples on our website in the next day or so. Okay, so looking ahead, the decisions that producers and landowners will need to make. Landowners will update payment yields if the updated yield is greater than the CCP yield. Also choose between base update options. And I want to make sure that this is clear and you remember from the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill that this required landowner signatures. Some of you have power of attorney that you could use to, uh, to sign to the landowners. You will need to make sure that if you have power of attorney that your current power of attorney applies to this as well and that it has not expired. If you don't, this was something that you may need to look into. So producers would choose between PLC and ARC. Producers will make a PLC ARC election for the 2018 crop year on each farm with seed cotton base. If all producers on a farm fail to make a unanimous election for PLC and ARC, the farm will be assumed to choose PLC for seed cotton. This decision under this program is only for the 2018 crop year. So the next steps would be that you could start to gather similar information used during implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. You'll need yield records from 2008 to 2012. You'll need planning history from 2009 to 2012. FSA has not announced a sign-up date yet. USDA has been working on the program, and we should begin to hear some details uh, soon. 
Now, I want to make sure you know that your local FSA office is probably not ready for you to come in yet and start making these decisions. But at the appropriate time, you can go in and, and start doing that at the FSA office. Now, in the meantime, we will be posting information on our website, www.cotton.org. We will have, of course, this PowerPoint presentation. We will have the audio of this webinar along with the other webinars on our National Cotton Council YouTube page. We'll have ARC examples. We'll show the PLC examples. We will also be tracking the NAS marketing year average prices throughout the marketing year once we start uh, the 2018 marketing year. So you'll be able to see each month what the cottonseed price is and what the lint price is and then what the associated seed cotton price would be. So I want to thank you for participating in the webinar and thank you for your support of the National Cotton Council. We will now begin taking questions via the chat boxes, so please start uh, typing your questions in and we will begin answering them. All right, thank you, Jody. And uh, again, we've got staff here in the conference room that will be uh, looking at questions on uh, uh, that are coming through the webinar chat window. Uh, and again, the resources that we provided and the PowerPoint Jody went through, uh, those are all available on our website and be able to be downloaded. Uh, let me just start with a couple of the uh, questions that have come up in the in the chat window now. Um, there was a question about the uh, CTAP uh, transition program yield. Uh, was it a uh, seed cotton or a lint yield? Uh, so, so I think, and hopefully I'm interpreting that correct, uh, that question correctly. If we go back to the uh, to the transition assistance program uh, that was included in the 2014 Farm Bill for Cotton, uh, for I guess for one year, and then for, if stacks wasn't implemented, it would have been available for two years. But anyway, that uh, transition assistance was paid on the CCP lint yield. Uh, so that the data associated with that farm would be the CCP lint yield, and it's going to be then the opportunity to either stay with that lint yield as the basis for your seed cotton yield, which then you would take lint and multiply it by 2.4, that lint yield multiplied by 2.4, or the opportunity to update based off of 90% of the 2008 through 2012 uh, average. Uh, and, and so further to that, along those same lines, another question about whether or not the RMA yields are acceptable as a proof of uh, proof of, of those production records from 2008 to 12. Uh, and yes, uh, that is the case that those uh, RMA yields are acceptable. Uh, and we look back at some of the forms that were used uh, when the yield update occurred for other crops and producers could enter those yields on that form and RMA yields were uh, were listed specifically as uh, as an acceptable source of data. Uh, so I think in the, you know, obviously check with the FSA office and then, you know, final details will depend on their implementation and interpretation, but uh, you can also check with your insurance agent, make sure those yield records are there. They may have already been transitioned to FSA because there's been efforts underway between the two agencies to synchronize their data, but uh, short answer is yes, your crop insurance yields will be acceptable to use in those updates. So the question, uh, we've got another question about uh, the crop base if a, a loan commodity but not a but not an, a covered commodity was planted from 2009 through 2012 in those allocations. Uh, those allocations are, are that, that option two, well, either one, option one or option two, the, the opportunity to, uh, to convert your generic base, uh, those are going to be based off plantings of just the covered commodities. Now, in this case, the covered commodities is going to include seed cotton but not, does not include loan commodities. So that, that could influence, obviously, either the allocation percentages as well as uh, perhaps whether or not the 80% comes into play compared to what uh, seed cotton acreage was. So it is covered commodities and not loan commodities. Looking at the questions, another question, uh, 
are the payments decoupled from production? Uh, and, and the answer is yes. Uh, this will be, as with other commodity bases, the establishment of seed cotton base uh, will be decoupled. Uh, so it will uh, not be linked to the planting decision. So those seed cotton bases, or if other new covered commodity bases are uh, uh, are in place, uh, those will be decoupled uh, and not impacted by your planting decision. So a question about uh, cotton planted on a farm from 2009 to 16, yet the farm was planted of wheat for harvest during the same year. Uh, and that may be from 09 to, not sure if that should be from 09 to 16 or 09 to 12. If, you're, if the question relates to the uh, ability of how that reallocations occur, that'll be from 09 to 12. There were some rules in place. I don't have those particularly in front of me if this is an acceptable double cropping practice or not where you had cotton and wheat uh, planted during the same year. We'll need to check the regs on that, but uh, those, how those double cropping, if that's an acceptable double cropping within FSA, then that may come into play uh, in terms of how this calculation occurs. I think uh, another question about the 90 days that is uh, the 90 days of enactment uh, that are uh, that's included in the bill. And yes, the bill does direct USDA to uh, to move forward in a very expeditious manner with it being 90 days of enactment of when the producer should be making the election uh, on the uh, on the base allocation. Uh, question was, is that realistic? I think it's it's certainly aggressive. Uh, it may be a bit on the optimistic side for the amount of work that USDA has in front of them. Uh, we know, though, USDA is already working on implementation, uh, at least behind the scenes. Uh, they've already talked to the agriculture committees. We're, in fact, uh, following up with USDA staff this week. Uh, so work is underway. Uh, whether or not that, that timeline slips a little bit will remains to be seen. But uh, I would anticipate these decisions, whether they're within that hard 90-day window or not, I think they're certainly going to occur by, by early to mid-summer. You're going to be looking at making these decisions. Uh, okay, question coming back on it. If cotton was not planted in 09 to 16, but the crop was planted to wheat, uh, well then obviously if it's planted to wheat, that's still a covered commodity. So it's 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 not going to fall into that category of having no covered commodity planted on any on any acre in any given year. So then it's going to be still be looking at the two uh, the two options for converting those generic acres to uh, to covered commodity basis. If there was no cotton planted there, uh, then uh, when it looks at option one, it's going to go to the choice there would be either to take the 80% of generic converted to seed cotton base and have 20% that is unassigned, or uh, the other alternative would be to look at option two, which is going to be a reallocation. If wheat was the only covered commodity planted on that farm, then the reallocation would be that wheat would be 100%. Of the covered commodities, and so it would it would turn all of the generic acres into into wheat base, and so the choice is there. It looks like I mean, just given the details we have, would be either to, to have 80% of generic go to seed cotton, or have all of the seed all of the generic go to wheat base. A uh, question about the market year price uh, being calculated on cotton seed. Uh, so that market year price for cotton seed is uh, is reported by USDA's NAS. It is actually collected at the gen level in terms of uh, surveying the gens about the prices uh, paid to farmers for cotton seed. And uh, that's uh, and that's the source. You can look at the monthly data that comes out, and uh, um, so that's that's the source there. We certainly encourage uh, active participation in that Jennings report and reporting those prices paid for cotton seed so that there is uh, as, as robust of data as possible. A uh, question about uh, the, uh, the opportunity to select between county level ARC or PLC for this program. Uh, 
PLC is not the required choice. Uh, this is going to be an election between uh, PL, the price loss coverage or the ag risk coverage programs. Uh, so it will be a, uh, a choice by the producer once they look at the specifics of the two programs and decide which one they feel like will make uh, will provide the better safety net. And again, we'll have the Art County options up on our website as, uh, in the next day or so. Um, I would I would say though that if a if a farm fails to make, and I think there's language in here, Jody, on unanimous election. I think if there's a if a farm fails to make a unanimous election, which means getting all the producers to agree, then the default will be PLC. So if there is no election made, it'll that farm will go to a PLC election. A uh, question regarding sugar cane on uh, on the farm with generic acres between 09 and 16. Would would all generic acres become unassigned? Uh, in our reading right now, yes, it would be the case. Sugar cane is not listed in the covered commodities, uh, so for purposes of this, it would be uh, it would be unassigned. And I would say too, this is. Uh, you know, this unassigned designation right now is applies to the 2018 crop. How this is handled in the 2019 Farm Bill is yet to be determined. A uh, question about uh, the speculation on ARC payment level uh, estimations at this point. Uh, we really don't have any yet. We'll, uh, we'll certainly provide those. We've looked a bit at uh, that information. Something to keep in mind on the uh, on the ARC formula is that when it calculates that five-year Olympic average price that goes into ARC, it always looks at if there are years in which the market year average price falls below the reference price, it substitutes in the reference price. Uh, so if we think back to the chart Jody showed, there will be several of the most recent years where uh, that price that would go into the five-year Olympic average would be would be the reference price. So I would I would imagine the price term that goes into that calculation of expected county revenue is going to be the reference price multiplied by the expected county yield. I think where what growers have to look at from very with a very critical eye on the ARC calculation is the fact that then those ARC payments are going to kick in when the actual county revenue falls below 86 percent of that of that target or expected revenue, and it's going to pay from 86% down to 76%. And again, we'll get cal we'll put those calculations up. Uh, but I I believe what we're going to see is the maximum mark payment uh, will probably be substantially less than what the the largest PLC payment might would be if prices went lower. Uh, yes, and, and following up on on the on the questions, the owner making the yield and base choices, and the producer making the program election, similar to two, 2012. Yes, it should uh, it will follow that same convention that occurred in 2012, and so that's where, as Jody mentioned, having power of attorney and the type of power of attorney uh, becomes very important in terms of the extent to which a, a producer is able to make those choices for the owner. Got a question here about yield determinations where the producer had a thousand pound yield and another producer had a, a fifteen hundred pound yield. Uh, again, these the yield calculations are going to be on a farm number by farm number basis. And so they're going to be looking at if you're looking at, at multiple years of, of cotton planted on that farm, uh, looking back at how it was handled on the twenty fourteen farm bill, that's simply looking at the data for those years and is a simple average uh, of that yield information across those years. So the week we can verify as well. It might need to clarify if that's, uh, uh, you know, different yields uh, on the same farm number or across years. A uh, question about a, a farm who had 500 acres of generic base and it was planted 250 acres of corn and 250 acres of soybeans, would the grower be able to convert 80% to seed cotton? 
uh, y yes is the answer. So in that particular case, uh, the farm could go to 80% uh, seed cotton or 400 acres of seed cotton and 100 of unassigned, or the other alternative would be 250 acres of corn and 250 acres of soybeans. So the question is, okay, a weighted average, not simple per uh, farm, per farm, uh, farm number. Okay. I think it's when it goes across uh, so it's a blended yield per farm number, and then perhaps when it goes across years, uh, it's a simple average across years. See any other questions? Yeah. We appreciate the questions coming in. This is very helpful. And again, this will be, as Jody mentioned, all we're capturing all of these questions. Uh, in fact, we are recording. Uh, all of the webinars as well, so the audio that's in the Q&A that's going on with here can be listened to after the fact, but all of these questions we will uh, provide uh, the, uh, we'll provide answers that will be in our frequently asked questions. Now, a question regarding irrigated versus non-irrigated. I think the only place that irrigated and non-irrigated is going to come into play is really county level ARC. Uh, I think those are going to get blended together if you're looking at a payment yield for PLC purposes on a farm number. Uh, although I do think they, uh, you know, specific yields would be the case in irrigated and non-irrigated. But if uh, uh, if you're looking at uh, a yield update, it's going to be uh, combine those together and get one payment yield for uh, for the farm number. And we're still seeing some folks uh, that are uh, typing in questions. Yeah, the question comes back to using data all the way back to 2009 to 2012. Uh, understand that's reaching quite a ways back into the history uh, to do that. Really, the, the motivation here was to, uh, or the intent was to keep these decisions the same as would have occurred or did occur for other farms in the implementation of the 2014 Farm Bill. We know that's uh, reaching back several years to pull out data, but now this establishes their, uh, generic acres and, and now the new seed cotton base acres on the, uh, for the same years, the same reference period as other crops were, uh, were subjected to in the 2014 Farm Bill implementation. So we're seeing a, a slowdown in the number of questions. Uh, uh, we do appreciate everyone uh, joining, and we'll uh, open up the conference lines here in just a minute to see if there's any additional uh, additional questions that may want to come across the conference line. Uh, and also, let me do a reminder that uh, uh, next Monday, the 26th of February, uh, this will be kind of our backup date or an opportunity for those that uh, may want to uh, see the presentation again or think about additional questions. There will be uh, another webinar uh, that will essentially be a, for open across the cotton belt. Uh, that will be 10 to a, 10 a.m. Central, 10 to 11.30 a.m. Central on Monday, February 26th. Uh, so if anything comes up between now and then or producers want to uh, have another opportunity, uh, to see the presentation, you're welcome to do that. And as we get additional feedback from USDA uh, on uh, any of the implementation questions that have come up, in addition to the frequently asked questions and keeping that updated, uh, I would anticipate that our summary document would also 
uh, be updated on a regular basis. If you've downloaded our summary, summary document, you'll see that it has, you know, we put an exact day uh, of uh, date on it in terms of when it was last updated. So as it's updated as well, just always check to make sure that you've got the most recent uh, version. And uh, audio will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, we are also going to develop just a separate YouTube video of this that will be available on our YouTube channel as well. So we're going to try to use our, our social media outlets to get the information out as, uh, to the best extent we can. And we've got some questions that are still being typed in here, so I'll give it another minute and see if the questions... So a question on the yields, must you use the 09 to 12 data or use the uh, uh, CTAP yield? Uh, and, I, and I think there on the yield update, you're only going to use those those updated yields if they're, if they're higher than what your CTAP yield was or your CCP yield. So it's going to be the case that uh, I think the way it's structured, FSA will essentially go with the higher of those. So you're not required to update. It is an option because those years may not have been beneficial to for every farm, and some may choose to stay where they are uh, for their existing payment yields. Uh, and the question, one another question we've got is, those decisions that were made in the 2014 Farm Bill regarding uh, perhaps the election of, of, of corn at that time that went into ARC, uh, will you still have to keep that selection on uh, on those acres that were selected into ARC? And now if you convert some of the generic base to corn, will it also be subject to uh, that, that previous election? <clears throat> we think that's the case, that it is going to be subject to that previous election. So that if you go through this process of converting generic acres into uh, covered commodities other than seed cotton, that they're going to follow that previous election. Uh, but that's a that's an implementation question that we have, as we've made a list of our own implementation questions to talk to USDA about. That's one that we uh, want to certainly verify. But we believe the case is going to be that you'll stay with that same those new acres that are created will stay with that same election that was done. And that election though is for 2018. Uh, it doesn't. We don't know that that's going to carry over into the next farm bill. We think as as we uh, as the Agriculture committees put together the next farm bill that they were there would likely be a choice to reevaluate between ARC and PLC looking ahead into the next farm bill. So what the choice we're making talking about right now is applicable to the 2018 crop, and then presumably any choices in 2019 and beyond would be dictated by the new farm bill. So the question, a question about if you have one person on the farm that updated yields, but you have other, uh, and they're the only ones that updated the yield, and the other producers on the farm chose not to update, how would they determine the yield? Well, didn't we decide it was going to be a blend? Yeah. Well, 
that may be the case. I don't. I'm not sure about how they would if the, if it may still at the end of the day be a blend across uh, across all the production records on that farm number. We'll need to check on on that particular situation, uh, and we'll we'll do some research there and see how that one might work out. We're going to take the conference call to the lecture mode. The conference is no longer in lecture mode. The conference, the conference is in is lecture no mode. In lecture mode. And we just encourage uh, anybody, if they have a question, to ask them. If you're not uh, going to pose a question, you might keep the phone muted on your end. That will help cut down background noise. I don't see any additional questions coming in at this time. Uh, I want to be respectful of your time. I know everybody's got a busy day ahead of them. We do appreciate uh, you joining us for this uh, conference call and webinar. Uh, we will again be updating these questions. Uh, and Good shame. The conference you is no longer in uh, lecture mode. I'm sorry, Shane. We can now. My my apologies. Well, I think we had we had not taken it off, or we put it back on lecture mode. Now, I was getting criticized here for not being able to operate the mute button. Well, <laughs> no, I think I think the fat fingering was on my end. So go ahead, Shane. All right, hey, our question here was where are we sitting on the gin cost share assistance for the 16 crop? Good. Yeah. No. Thank you for that question. Um, you know, no. I wish I had a definitive word to give y'all uh, down there. I know that we are still staying in co close contact with USDA. We're still hearing, uh, you know, that it's under uh, strong consideration by USDA. Uh, I think it's uh, still a possibility. Nothing is definitive, uh, but certainly the secretary understands the need that is out in the countryside. Uh, I think he also understands that even though this program is put in place for the 2018 crop, the payments are not available until October of 2019. Uh, so we're, we're hopeful, and uh, we do know that, you know, nothing was going to happen until this supplemental disaster bill moved forward. So maybe now that gives uh, uh, the opportunity for the secretary to do uh, to do something and make some announcement. If it were to occur, uh, just. It, by way of the size of the program, it would be probably roughly about half the money allocated to this program as, as was opposed to what was allocated for the previous program. Uh, and it would be paid on 2016 planted acres or planted and considered planted acres. So we're continuing to monitor it. We're hopeful. Uh, no definitive word, but uh, um, I know it's still under some, I think, positive consideration. Uh, another question uh, about the presentation being downloadable. Yes, it is. Uh, and the frequently asked questions, yes, it will It will reflect all the webinars because we've been getting some very good questions from across the webinars and will come into one document. Uh, question about uh, the disaster programs. Uh, again, uh, and, and that was a significant part if you're in a for the hurricanes and the wildfires, if you're in a, uh, a disaster declared county, I believe it's going to be a secretary of declaration, then producers in that county uh, could be eligible for the disaster assistance that was included in this supplemental bill, and it can be very important to some producers. Uh, it, it, leaves a lot of, it gives a lot of latitude to USDA in terms of exactly how they implement the program. I think in general, though, if you look at um, uh, producers who had purchased crop insurance, then I think the intent is to look at that your market revenue, your crop insurance indemnities that you already received, and any disaster payments would come back up to about 85% of what uh, of, of a crop insurance coverage level. So essentially, like having 85% coverage, and that would be the intent of the disaster programs. Uh, in addition to obviously the regs for the cotton and dairy changes that were in the supplemental bill, USDA also has to work through and implement disaster assistance. So a lot of things on their plate as they look ahead to this year. But uh, the, but that is that's also in the mix, and again, will be very important uh, for some per parts of the cotton belt that were affected uh, by particularly hurricanes uh, Harvey and Irma. 
All right. Well, I'm not I'm not seeing any additional questions at this point. Um, you are always welcome, though, to follow up again with your uh, council's member services representative. Uh, contact us in the Memphis office. Uh, we are always uh, here to answer your questions and help in any way we can. Uh, we'll thank you again for your participation and for your support of the National Cotton Council. Thank you. Have a good day.